Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and Bannock, and welcome to episode three of the Spike Nation Weekly Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Campos, a.k.a. 40 Licks, and in today's episode, we're sitting down with Six String Pirate. You might know him as the Impossible Brew Guy. Also, a special edition of 40 Licks Gaming Quarter with my buddy Nick, an Xbox One, and possibly some lube. Also, Bannock with the news. You can find all this at the Spike Nation Weekly Podcast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, to another rendition of Get to Know Your Spiked Member. And now, your host, Forty Lips. Welcome, Spike Nation, to Get to Know Your Spiked Member. Today, we're sitting down with Six String Pirate. Hello, Six String. How you doing today? What's happening, brother? Doing good. How you doing? I'm good, man. Can I call you Mr. String? You can call me that, sure. <laughs> so, Six String, uh, you know, I know you for one thing and one thing only, and that's your Impossible Brew avatar. You know, <laughs> I swear when I see when I saw Six String Pirate mess with me for the first time, I was like, who the hell is this guy? And, <laughs> and I went right to the, the info, and it's like, oh, the Impossible Brew guy. I've known you from many hilarious comments throughout the yeah. year. Every once in a while, I have a good comment, and I sound like I'm actually funny or something. <laughs> or actually smart, which is something that... Uh... No, nah, that never happens for me. I know <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. So, uh, so Six String, uh, welcome to Get to Know Your Spiked Member. And uh, I wanted to know a little bit about you, a little bit that uh, maybe the first time you saw Spiked, or uh, where you work, or what do you do for a living? Uh, you know, what's funny is actually I was part of the site uh, way back in the day when it was uh, Spiked Humor. Yeah, and, I, I, you know, I never registered for Spiked Humor, but I always was on yeah. it. And it wasn't until Spike Nation came around that I registered and became a user. But I've always been lurking around. Yeah, same with me, man. I was always just kind of leeching off there. I was like, you know what? I got to jump in and be one of the assholes in the, in the group <laughs> and start talking stuff, you know? There's many of us. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of funny. But uh, no, man, uh, you know, like uh, I get to goof off on the computer a lot. I work in the, in the music industry, actually. So a lot of my time is spent doing uh, either research online or, or uh, doing stuff on the computer. Do you, uh, do you like produce or uh, you're sort of behind the scenes or do you? Uh... Uh, I'm behind the scenes now, man. You know what? I started off, I went to school for it. I studied guitar, I did jazz guitar and all this kind of stuff. And I got fucking tired of the hours, man. It was, uh, you know, like I'd go to school and then I'd be in the studio from 10 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the morning listening yeah. to people who can't fucking sing. And <laughs> You know, my buddy my buddy Steve, who I've played his music before, had an intern a lot in the, in the city for a bunch of, uh, you know, record places. And uh, I remember he worked for this company for like three years and, and uh, he was like, all right, man, do you got anything for me? Like, nah. No, you could still intern for us. You know, like, uh, you know, we just, we, you could stay here, but we ain't going to pay you. Like, I don't know, those yeah. music degrees, you know, there's a lot of brilliant artists out there that this industry does not pay attention to. Yeah, let me tell you something, man. I definitely paint my dues. And uh, anytime anybody asks me about it, I just tell them, like, just, in, like, watch Spinal Tap, and that is as... 100% as, like, authentic to the music industry as you can get. Even though it looks kind of funny and it's stupid, like, the same exact things happen. I mean, I can – I've done tours and stuff where I've gone on oh, tours gonna, and production. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you've done any shows before, going out to bars or – Yeah, I mean, like, like I used to stories. perform. Yeah, I mean, I used to perform and you always get, like, the, the you know, the drunks and stuff like that. But then I did a – I did a tour, and I don't want to say the artist because you know I don't want to actually fucking give them free advertising and stuff. But uh, but uh, I right. mean, 
We I all knew it was Nickelback, so yeah, don't worry about it. Damn it, son of a bitch. <laughs> Look, was, I got out on the good day. It was bro. a Creed reunion band, but hey, you know, God, I don't guy, judge. Actually, the guy lives, uh, lives, uh, what's it, what's his Scott name? Scott Stapp. Scott Yeah, he lives, uh, <laughs> the belligerent like, drunk. Yeah, he lives like 20 minutes away from me, man. Every once in a while, he'll pop up on, like, the local newspaper, like, this guy beat his girlfriend, or he did something stupid. <laughs> whatever man but yeah man i've had my fair share of uh of those spinal tap moments like someone doing coke next to me like uh you know I, I, I was wondering you know from those stages i feel like you could see a lot do you ever see like a uh, little bit of raping going on in the in those because like i swear every bar i've ever been to was just uh, a six foot man groping a uh, 15 year old girl getting in for you know a college day oh you mean like in the in the crowd Oh yeah, like you, oh, could, yeah. you could observe the whole crowd. You see, like someone copping a feel or putting uh, a roofie in someone's you'd, drink. You'd be surprised the kind of shit that people do that they don't realize it. You can always like <laughs> there's somebody year old. standing six feet up. Yeah, there's like the fifty year olds who probably shouldn't even be at the concert that are clearly smoking way more than what their body can handle nowadays. And then you'll see like you know the the funniest thing, and we've all been there, is like watching like the the fourteen and fifteen year olds that you know mom and dad let them uh, go to a show, and everyone's trying to smoke weed and trying to look cool, and they're just blitzed. Well, I mean, that goes hand in hand. I mean, exactly. You got to join. You're instantly cool. Come on, kids. Yeah, the best part though is just watching the people that can't handle their shit, and they're just going ape shit, and you don't know what's gonna happen next. Like, is he gonna try and jump the barrier? Is he gonna sit there and just fall face first? It's uh, it's the best, the best one that I can remember, man. This was when I was interning. Tell I me, went, don't hold back. Oh man, I was, uh, I went to the show. This is like the first, first night that I was interning at a record label up in New York, and we went to go see this band called Rose Hill Drive. And oh yeah, like, I know them. Oh dude, they're awesome. They do yeah, a great I've never show. Heard of them. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if, they... <laughs> but uh, there was like a, a stage that was like two foot tall. You know, like the standard ones that they have in the bars and stuff. Yeah, no, I got you. And this fucking guy. He's probably six foot four, two hundred and fifty pounds. It's basically up. Rob Zombie. Right. Well, he gets up and like on the stage, he looks to the left. He sees that security guard is coming at him, so he decides to stage dive, and not a single <laughs> no, <laughs> no one putting their hands up for that one. No one. And I like the place was packed, and I was sitting way in the back, and I can tell you, I felt that ground shake. So that guy <laughs> that almost makes it a win. Oh, it was perfect. It was a win for me because I was drinking. I was <laughs> it was a win my for the majority of the people there. Yeah, it was good, man. But I always tell people, everything that you can imagine, man, it, all that stuff really, really happens. Well, uh, Six String, uh, I feel like that was uh, a very uh, in, you know, exclusive interview. And <laughs> I feel like we learned a lot about what makes Six String Pirate the person he is. So I just wanted to say thank you for joining us on no, Get to Know no. Your Spike member. And it was lovely hearing from you. And do you have any uh, last words for the Spike Nation audience? The four uh, people that are actually going to listen to the Spike Nation Weekly Podcast. Uh, don't be an asshole. That's all. Just, uh, just don't, <laughs> don't be, be an, an asshole. asshole. That's going to get you very far. And uh, exactly. thank you, Six Strings, for joining us on the Spike Ma- Nation Weekly Podcast. And guys, back to the show. Thank you, brother. No problem, buddy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for turning into another wonderful edition of Get to Know Your Spike Member. May you join us next week. And from all of us here at the Spike Nation Weekly Podcast, have a wonderful day. Hey, everybody. You know, Spike Nation is like a train. A bellowing locomotive of all the best news, videos, and comments. But that train needs those tracks to be greased. So remember, click the donate button at the top left of the homepage. You know, nothing is better than a properly lubed track. Now, back to our show. Hey guys, for this week's Gaming Corner, I recorded an Xbox One First Impressions with my buddy Nick. But it ran a little too long, so I'm going to throw it up for next week. But for this week, I'm playing an iOS game called Sorcery. It's a choose-your-own-adventure game that you've always dreamed of, full of different paths and choices. I've played it over three times and have never had the same experience. I recommend just buying Sorcery 1 and 2 together so you can have the complete journey. That was 40 Licks Gaming Corner. Tune in next week for Xbox One impressions, and enjoy the rest of the show.
Broadcasting from Hill Valley, California, the world's only source for all things Spike, the Spike Nation News Report. And now, your hosts, Forty Licks and Bannock. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We begin today in Denver, Colorado, as Colorado officials say that in prevention of thieves stealing a 420 mile marker sign, they are going to replace it with a sign that instead reads 419.99 miles. I guess in the Mile High State, people are mildly high. Researchers at John Hopkins have concluded through intensive, world-renowned research that caffeine enhances your long-term memory. That caffeine enhances certain memories after 24 hours it's consumed, including tea, coffee, and anything else if you want, injected into your formal vein. Previous studies have stated that it has no effect on long-term memory, but this proves that we need to spend more money on research and money instead of war and drugs. That's the truth, except for weed. The next step is to research this further and see how it can benefit people with diseases like Alzheimer's. This is great news for all of you caffeine lovers. Now you can gain super intelligence and immortality through drinking coffee. In other news, comments flare in a video posted by Exploder that shows a video of a cop commending a civilian's action to exercise their basic rights. One spiked member, Lon Sausage, states, I definitely give high marks to the officer. However, the whole encounter was pleasant until the man in the car started waving his rights around like a douchebag. I guess that wraps up the Spike Nation Weekly News Report. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the rest of the show. Well, that'll do it for Episode 3 of the Spike Nation Weekly Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. This week's music submission comes from Spike member Chris Shaw. You can check out his music at the link below. And once again, thanks for listening. And remember, if it's not spiked, don't drink it!